Longer term, we remain convinced about our, our low growth, our high volatility environment. And central banks of the last 10 years, uh, basically since the great financial crisis in 2008, have increased their balance sheets eight times. Quantitative easing, central banks have bought um, government bonds and, and some, some credit bonds and have, have increased their balance sheet eight times. And they've doubled over the last, last year since the COVID pandemic recession. So this naturally raises many red flags. People are worried about this causing inflation and it has caused asset inflation. And certainly there's a lot of distortions in asset prices and that's why we don't hold gold and we don't hold double bonds, but it hasn't impacted inflation. Uh, Euro area has been trying to get it too close to its 2% inflation target over the last decade unsuccessfully. Japan has been trying to get inflation in its, in its economy for the last two decades with QE and fiscal support, and it's also been unsuccessful. There's just too much debt and aging demographics uh, to allow growth to recover like we did post-World War II. And um, a new headwind, was, which is something that, we, that a report has come out recently, talks about productivity growth. So one of the reasons we were able to grow out of the debt post-World War II, and particularly in the 70s and 80s, uh, was the, the huge increase in productivity, partly driven by increase in technology, computers, uh, was a big improvement to, to productivity, being able to better manage stock control and communicate, uh, reduce your, 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 your inventory cycle, all very, very, very positive. However, there's a report out from BCA which says that over the last decade, um, where the, te the technology innovations have been focused on social media, um, if you think about the, the, the FANG stocks and, and the huge movement there, everybody's now on their cell phones. They believe that social media has had a negative impact on, on productivity. So effectively, technology has had a negative impact on productivity over the last decade, not a positive one like it had in the 70s and 80s and, and 90s. And this is a partly due to um, policy mistakes as, as governments react to, to social media and, and social media, which is reflecting uh, people who are fed fake news um, uh, or, or led by fear campaigns. And the results, there tend to be overreactions or underreactions when uh, compared to, to what would have otherwise happened. We look within South Africa, it's just completely anecdotal, but the looting and violence that we had, which was horrific, apparently was uh, driven by 12 Twitter accounts. Uh, and if you think back to the, um, the, the Trump years, those late night toilet tweets that he would send out, and they certainly didn't help price stability or economic stability in, in, in any way. So that's just a, an interesting new headwind to, to growth. Not only do you have to worry about massive amount of debt but, and, and aging demographics, but uh, the impact that social media is having not on um, people's emotional well-being, but on, on the economy as well. Uh, the bottom line is that we're unlikely to, to grow out of um, the current mess that we're in. Inflation is unlikely to take take hold and the most likely uh, path over the next decade is that more QE will be needed. And the chart on, on the right, uh, the very, very right is Japan and the squiggly line talks to the central bank balance sheet and the smooth line is their, their GDP. And you can see that Japan has now got, um, its balance sheet is now bigger than its economy. So you've got roughly six uh, trillion on bonds on their balance sheet compared to about 5 trillion of their GDP. The US and, and the Eurozone are well below. Those, the balance sheets are, are nearly half what their GDP is. So over the next decade, we could easily see uh, the US and, and Eurozone continue their bond purchasing, continuing QE, and, and that those central bank balance sheets easily rise to the size of the GDP like Japan has done. So there's no, there's no headwinds to kicking the can down the road. And when it comes to politicians' decisions uh, about facing uh, disasters, certainly they prefer the kicking the can down the road uh, option. That's been plain to see over the last 30 years uh, in Japan and the last 10 years in other developed markets, and I think it will be the preferred option uh, going forward. But looking more closely at, um, at inflation, uh, you know, everyone is talking about it. 